Hello, I'm Brian Kaplan, editor of The Banker. I'm in the Royal Bank of Scotland's Edinburgh headquarters with Ross McEwen, the chief executive. Uh, Ross, thanks for doing this interview with us. And uh, you've done a huge amount of work, obviously, in restructuring Royal Bank of Scotland. What's your view of, of the correct business model for the bank now? Well, I've been pretty clear about what I want this business to look like. It, it needs to be a great bank here in the UK and the Republic of Ireland. We will have operations uh, in Western Europe, uh, because we've got some very, very good corporate uh, relationships there and also UK corporates that actually operate in Western Europe. We also have an operation, a small operation in Asia and one in the US that look after our corporates and financial institution links uh, in the parts of our business that we're very strong. But the 90% of our revenues will come out of the UK and the Republic of Ireland and that's what we're working towards. Okay, and you're going to be very much focused on, on the domestic retail market, is that right? Well, we, we are a large player in the domestic retail market. We're the largest SME player in the UK. We're actually the largest mid-market uh, commercial bank, and we're one of the largest corporate banks in the UK. So this is where our fantastic franchises are, and that's why the concentration needs to be here, so that we can actually deliver up to those great customer groupings. Okay, and, and you're going through a rebranding. Tell me how that's going to work. Well, what was happening um, prior to my time, we had a global operation. And to have a global operation, you have a global brand, and that was RBS. And that was known all around the world because of the positioning of that brand. But as you come back to being a local UK Republic of Ireland business, what you need is local brands for those marketplaces. And we've clearly said for Ireland, it's going to be Ul uh, Ulster Bank. Uh, for uh, England and Wales, it's going to be Nat West. Uh, and for Scotland, it's going to be back to the Royal Bank of Scotland, um, as people call it, the Royal. So uh, those are the fantastic brands we have. We also have other um, niche brands uh, for private banking um, through Coots and up in Scotland at Adam & Co. In the military, we actually have Holtz, which is a well-known brand in that marketplace. So we've got br different brands that mean different things to different customer groups. So it's moving away from global to being much, much more local. Okay. Now, when we talk about the domestic retail market and even the business market uh, these days, uh, it's very much ab about digital, isn't it? So, so, I mean, how do you plan to be uh, a digital bank and to meet sort of the requirements of digital savvy customers? Yeah, it, it is becoming much more digital and people are actually happy to do things themselves and sometimes they prefer to do things themselves as long as you make it simple and easy for them. And we've been uh, one of the leaders in the mobile area. Uh, we've got one of the best mobile apps, and both under uh, all our brands, under the Royal Bank of Scotland, also NatWest, and under Ulster Bank. We've got 4.2 million customers now who just use that as their way of doing their banking, their transactions. They could do some um, small purchasing of, of product on there. So this is the way people are and doing And I think they've got iTouch security, is that right? First in the market to do the touch eye security, with use your finger or thumb. Uh, use it myself, it's fantastic. I get frustrated when um, I, I have to go in and put digits in nowadays, use your thumb. So the biometrics is also something we've been very strong at. But that's the demand from people. They want things simple and easy. Okay, but now what about the IT investment you've had to make to do that? Because, I mean, the bank has had difficulties with the IT. You know, like most banks, it's struggled for, with, with legacy IT. Sometimes it, 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 it goes under, under the pressure, doesn't it? Well, in, in 2012, we did have an issue, and we've strengthened up. Uh, our IT resilience. Um, you know, now you look at what's happening in the bank, we very, very seldomly have any difficulties, but we are plagued with a, a memory that people have. Uh, and to ha you have to have good technology. And this bank actually has fantastic technology. Our problem is because of the way it was constructed, it's just got too much of it. So one of our issues is how do you get less technology that is fantastic technology? And that's what our technology team are working on. And that's why we're able to be you know, first in the market with Touch ID. Uh, we've been very, very strong in the mobile, very strong in uh, online for our business customers as well through a, a product called Bankline, where they can do all sorts of facilitation for corporate customers. We're also one of the first uh, in the markets part side of the business to allow customers just to do the trades themselves. Uh, and some of the, the rate trading is now done at customer desk as opposed to us. It's electronic, straight through, nobody touches it. So we've actually been a strong leader in the technology front, uh, and that's what we'll have to continue to be. And what does it mean for the old bank branch? <laughs> Look, I mean, the, we're going to see less of them, presumably. Look, you are seeing less of them, you're seeing them less of them because customers aren't using them. We're just a reflection, uh, again, of what our customers are doing. And as more customers use their mobile phone, and the transactions on mobile phones are exponentially going up, they're up 400% over the last three to four years. 
and yet the branch usage is down about 35-40%. So you're having to reflect what customers uh, feel and think and do and how they operate. Uh, and the branch is just changing in shape. It's moving from being transaction based to being very service and product sale based. Uh, when customers come in they want some advice, so that's where they go to, or they'll pick up the phone, or they'll click to chat, but it's, it's the optionality. So less branches, still vitally important in our strategy, uh, but they will be used for advice, service and sales. Okay, now let's turn to the business customers. Uh, because the bank said it's, it's pulling out of global transaction services. Um, so, so what does that mean? I mean, how will you serve the payments needs of, of those customers going forward? Yeah, most of our customers' needs are either UK, Republic of Ireland based or Western European based. We still deal in multiple numbers of currencies for our customers. I think we can do 160 different currencies on behalf of customers who are trading offshore. Uh, we do one in four of the payments in the UK on behalf of our business customers and our customers. So we are big in transaction services. What we pulled out of was global transaction services where there are six or seven major players. The in investment IT-wise is very, very high. Uh, and my view was for us to put another half a billion into it to get a 4% return wasn't good value for our shareholders. So we're actually extracting ourselves out of that marketplace. And those customers are going to six or seven other players. Uh, but every other piece of transaction service we're still very, very actively involved in. Um, and, but it's the global transaction services that we've pulled out on. Okay, uh, what about on the investment banking side? Because Royal Bank of Scotland had a, a huge investment bank, obviously it caused it a number of problems. Uh, I mean, how do you see the strategy there going forward? Again, uh, my view on these is be very clear about what you do and be very clear about your proposition to customers. And in our in what we call our markets business, uh, we, we do three things and we do them incredibly well because we're very focused on them now. The first is uh, FX, foreign exchange, on behalf of corporate customers, vitally important for people who are trading uh, or taking positions offshore. Second is rates. Uh, we're very strong globally on rates uh, and we're one of the sl strongest players there and we'll stay in that marketplace. And the third thing is uh, we're doing debt capital management on behalf of, uh, of our corporate customers as well. And those are the three things we do. We do them well. We are the major, one of the major players on those in the UK uh, and in the Republic and also in Western Europe. So those are the positions we're going to hold on to. And that's why we've got an operation in the US, or we've got an operation in, in Asia, so we can facilitate 24 hours a day, uh, which is very important as well. But very focused. This business was huge. And my view when I took over was if you have that size of business, you have to get a return out, and I couldn't see us getting returns out of it, and I couldn't see us being significant in all the parts of those markets we were in. So get back to things you're good at, that you've got good strategic positions, and it's proved, I think, to be right so far. In the sense you're seeing a lot of other banks trying to find their own shape mm -hmm. in this marketplace. Well, we've found ours. So we're just getting on with business, and you saw that around Brexit, you know, our team performed incredibly well, but again, very focused on what customers' needs were on those days before and the days after. So it's shaping up well. We're also able to attract talent, which is important in those businesses. So we're actually attracting some pretty good talent into that business because people can see the clarity of our strategy and we're very heavily into the execution now. Okay, uh, now we're back to Brexit. <laughs> you mentioned it. Um, and, and low interest rates, aren't we? And you have dis discussed about how you might have to charge business customers for, for holding cash balances if, 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 if the environment deteriorates further. Well, what our view was, and certainly mine, when you look at what's happened in Europe, where interest rates have gone negative in some countries, you do need to be in a position, if you need to, to actually charge customers. And what we found ourselves with terms and conditions that actually didn't allow it. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do it, but we need to have the ability to be actually able to tra uh, charge negative interest rates if they go there. Otherwise, it costs the bank a lot of money to support deposits. And deposits used to be a very strong part of wealth of a bank. Uh, and they're vitally important to actually fund your assets uh, and so you can you know, take assets on your book. But at the same time, I think you're seeing a change in what the value of those liabilities now are. And what we did was we changed our terms and conditions. I don't have any intention of going negative. Like we have got parts of our business over in the Channel Islands which are charging negative interest rates because that's what is happening in the market. Mm. Uh, and because everybody else is that's at the same on time. on Euro accounts. In yeah. yeah, so th that's what's starting to happen and you certainly saw that uh, in parts of Europe, even where mortgage rates went negative. Mm -hmm. Now if you actually don't have the opportunity to charge and hold on to this, you, you know, a bank does need to make money. But at this stage we have no intention, 
but I think banks need to be in a position to, to be able to, should interest rates go negative, and most other banks had that ability, we didn't. Okay. Now, the UK, you're focusing on the UK. It's a very crowded banking market, very competitive. Uh, I mean, what, what can Royal Bank of Scotland bring to it that you know, the others aren't already giving? Well, first off, um, we like competition and we thrive on competition. And this bank getting back into a shape where it's very focused on the markets it in, it's in uh, is, is focused on being the best in the market. But we're going to compete on customer service because anybody can actually change a price. Anybody can put a different product out into the marketplace. It's very easy to chase it. But actually... An organisation that changes its behaviour to focus on customers is very, very difficult to emulate in a short period of time. There's lots of competition in this marketplace. In the business market, you've got a lot of small niche players as well as very, very large players playing in that business space. In the retail space, you've got some very strong competitors here, but you're also seeing the new uh, innovative little um, banks appearing into the marketplace, uh, which will be quite interesting, that are just purely mobile. And that's why our concentration on mobile is to make sure we're the best at this and the others can come into the space, but they'll be competing heavily against you know, some of the best like ourselves. So lots of competition in the marketplace. Uh, personally, I think biz businesses thrive on competition because it's great for customers. Uh, but this bank will compete. Ross Buchan, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you.